So the next item I have is Dr. Polsky from the health department to give us our weekly COVID update. Dr. Polsky, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You may want to consider on weeks like this maybe to have uh, maybe a celebrity guest commissioners come in and join us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's true. Yeah, think of what yeah, it would do for yeah. your ratings. I didn't know yeah. we could do that. Uh, as health officer, I am giving you permission. Oh, there, good. Go. there we there go. We go. Good. We're good. Right. Bring We're Commissioner good. Nutter in. Yeah, we'll bring Commissioner Nutter back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so our, well, on a, on a less lively note, um, case rates continue to, to uh, increase. Over the last four weeks, uh, our case count has increased uh, about 245%. Um, I'm going to, I may not be mic'd for this, but you can take this, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah. Quick. All right. Uh, so I just want to point out for, sorry, Richard. Um, just want to point out that in the weeks from Thanksgiving, uh, we saw this increase in cases, which it doesn't quite pop out because you have this huge bulge after Christmas, but uh, this is a, a greater than 50% increase in cases. And then the week before Christmas, it dipped again. And then we had a major family holiday, and then we had this. Well, where we are right now is very, very similar to where we were in that stretch there. And this weekend, we will hit another major family holiday. So uh, what I really want to impress upon everyone is that we have an opportunity to avoid something similar to this. And that's being very mindful as families get together, um, especially for families where there may be people who are medically more vulnerable. And, and that increase is, is certainly not uh, just in Calvert. Statewide, actually since the, the governor made the announcement three weeks ago to open more, uh, case rates across the state have doubled uh, per day, and we've seen a 27% increase in hospitalizations. So I'm not up here saying that we should shut anything down at this point, but just I, I think the maybe a, a more subtle message was that we were through the worst of it and people could just start to relax a whole lot more. So I think it's, it's, it's important for all of us to just make sure that we are continuing to be mindful and considerate of others in the community who haven't had the opportunity to get vaccinated yet or whose immune system uh, just doesn't function as well. And uh, you can see, broken down by age, uh, the, at the older end of the spectrum, uh, a result of the vaccination efforts to get seniors more vaccinated, you can see the very low rates there, uh, which is, uh, again, a great indicator. And we've seen evidence in, in specific studies, but uh, just a, a community-wide evidence of the effectiveness of the vaccines to this point. And you can see that big pop um, in um, 36 to 55-year-olds. And the rates in other younger age groups have not gone down over the past couple of weeks. There was a question last week about testing. So the point of this slide is mostly just to show that we are doing several thousand tests a week in the county. And then you can see the positivity rates on the far right have continued to climb each week. And then uh, the, I updated the chart from last week. And you can see that we're, you know, well into the we shouldn't be there zone. So this is a, a mess of a slide. This is from the state. And the reason I put this up is this is looking at vaccination rates specifically in seniors broken down by each county. Now, the, the way they ordered the county is by popula population. So Montgomery County is top. They have the, the highest number of seniors, Somerset at the bottom with the lowest number. So that's not ranked by the uh, amount of vaccinations, it's just ranked by population. It's I'm sure it's difficult to see at home and probably difficult for everybody even to see here, uh, but uh, currently in Calvert County, we have the second highest rate of vaccination among seniors in the entire state, and it's certainly not accidental. There's been a, a lot of work by a lot of people to try to really concentrate, get, uh, get the most vulnerable people in so when CVS and Walgreens fell flat with vaccinations in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, the health department jumped right in 
uh, made sure that both residents and staff were vaccinated. We continue to go out every two weeks to every nursing home and vaccinate any new residents or any new staff who are there. So we realize that populations are not static. Uh, the Office on Aging and the nurses at the hospital have been doing a tremendous job going to senior centers and rotating around the county each week to make sure that people who can't travel to mass vaccination sites or other places that they can get vaccinated close to home. Uh, the health department has been working with primary care providers all the way through, both to prioritize the most vulnerable patients that they have, but also to encourage uh, seniors and other patients who may be hesitant, but when they hear from their own doctor or their own nurse practitioner, this is important, they're more likely to go ahead and get vaccinated. We've also been working with uh, local chapters of Concerned Black Women and NAACP and predominantly African-American congregations to make sure that we're seeing relatively high rates of vaccination among, uh, among our minority populations as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, our nurses at the health department have been doing house calls for people who are homebound, who uh, are seniors, and even those who are at younger ages, but because of medical problems are much more vulnerable. So uh, the weekly chart of vaccination, just to keep everybody up to date. So currently uh, about 25,700 Calvert County residents have at least begun their vaccination series. That accounts for about 28% of the total population or about 35% of all the adults. So even though we've made uh, really good strides, we're above the state in every measure as far as vaccination. When you get back to seniors, we still have 3,400 seniors who have not been vaccinated yet. And we still have essentially three quarters of the population when you include children and teens who have yet to be vaccinated. Dr. on seniors, is that by choice they don't want it or we just haven't been able to get to them yet? So it's a, I, I can't give you any percentages there. Uh, certainly there are gonna be some people at any age who for various reasons are going to decline vaccination. Uh, for people who are not connected to the internet, they have other reasons that they may be a bit disconnected from the way that this process is rolled out. Um, then uh, we're doing our best, again, Office of Aging and other community groups are doing their best to try to reach out to people to find out you know, who they are, how we can either get vaccine to them or get them to a place where they can be vaccinated. And I think that there is a percentage, and I can't, again, give you a, an exact amount, but I think there's a percentage of people who are really kind of struggling with a decision. And the next time they see their doctor or their nurse practitioner, it's that, you know, I'm here for you. I know your health history. There's that trust relationship that hopefully will be enough to then encourage that person to get vaccinated. But you know, the take home again, getting back to the initial comments is that we're heading into a holiday weekend. Still, you know, roughly a quarter of the seniors in our county are not vaccinated, not, not even a first shot at this point. And we all just need to be very mindful of what we're doing through this week, what kind of situations that we may end up getting exposed to the virus and then who we're gonna be around. Um, if, if people can gather outside, obviously, you know, all the things that we've all learned over the past year, we are in a very different spot this year than we were Easter last year. Uh, and you know, reminding everyone that I think within the next month that almost everyone who would like to be vaccinated who is at significant risk will have that opportunity. So we're not talking some indefinite amount of time as far as you know, the actions, the behaviors that we do to try to keep things in check. We just you know, need to hang in there for about another month or so, give people the chance to get vaccinated. At that point, things will be a lot safer. So and, I, I haven't had an email or talked to anybody in the last two weeks complaining that they couldn't get a shot. Great. So that tells me that the people that really wanted one have gotten one. So you're going to hit this plateau, as you say, where yep. it's those seniors that don't want it for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So my sense is that all those people that wanted them in the seniors group have gotten them. And now we're just working down through the list right. and trying to get those people that haven't, for whatever reason, get over whatever their hurdle is to get them vaccinated. Correct. And and this is where I'm, I'm concerned about the state strategy of pushing vaccines to these mass vac sites, as opposed to earlier in the process, getting vaccines to family doctors who can have those conversations. Uh, 
the mass vac site in Charles County, which was billed as a regional vaccination site, only 3% of the vaccines that have been administered there have gone to residents of Calvert or St. Mary's. And even when you include Charles County, only 8% of the vaccines that have been administered have gone to anyone in the Southern Maryland County. They might as well just put that thing in Eastern Montgomery County. Uh, and, or and Virginia. Save, and <laughs> save people a lot of gas and travel time. So uh, where can people get vaccinated at this point? Uh, up on the slide listed the two um, closest mass vaccination sites. They have plenty of appointments. So if, if um, it, starting today, anyone 16 and over who has an underlying health condition and their which is almost any kind of chronic health problem, is now eligible. In two weeks, the age right now for healthy people is 60. In two weeks, it'll go down to 55. And then by the last week in April, anyone, anyone 16 over who wants to get vaccinated can get vaccinated. Uh, I will also point out that the 16 and 17 year olds can only get the Pfizer vaccine. We have not gotten a dose of Pfizer at the health department in over a month, about a month and a half. The hospital isn't getting any either. So for anyone who is 16 or 17, and I would also encourage for anyone who's 16 or 17 and lives in a household with a grandparent or anyone at any age who has any serious underlying health condition, somebody in the household has cancer and they're going through chemo and their immune system is compromised, that those people should try to get vaccinated as well, even if they don't have underlying health conditions. But unfortunately, we can't help them at the health department and they're not going to be able to help them at the hospital because we just don't have the vaccines that are approved. So it's going to be hunting around. Pharmacies have been hit and miss with who's getting Pfizer and who hasn't. Uh, at the mass vac sites, they generally have some Pfizer. So uh, for that age, to a narrow age range, uh, they, they need to look and make sure that they qualify. And then locally, health department, hospital, uh, both still using the county registry. So if uh, people are now looking you know, to get onto a registry, uh, go to the, the, the Calvert County government website and register. The pharmacies each have their own registration system. And I listed the locations of the pharmacies in the county who have vaccine. And then, as I mentioned last week, Calvert Internal Medicine Group and Calvert Health Medical Group, that's the primary care doctors under the hospital umbrella, all have very limited. So 200 doses went to each of those this week. Um, Calvert Internal still has about 15,000 of their patients who have yet to be vaccinated. So they're, they're going to be able to vaccinate some, but uh, a limited amount. And that's all I have for today. So would it be helpful? <clears throat> would it be helpful if we, because we get the distribution list, so we know who has Pfizer and who has Moderna. Well, we don't the for list? the pharmacies, actually. So we, we don't. We have a hard time even finding out how many doses are going to each pharmacy, much less which which vaccine they're getting. I, I know what the hospital's getting. I know, obviously, what we're getting at the health department. And I know what Calvert Internal and the um, hospital medical group. But beyond that, we, we don't know who's getting what. Well, we get that report. And it does, in that report, it says who gets Pfizer and who gets Moderna allocations. Yeah. I was just wondering if it's helpful if a 16 year old can only get Pfizer instead of them having to go do this list of 12 locations, if there's a way we could say, mm -hmm. if you're 16 years old, you only have Pfizer, your best opportunities is at X, Y, Z. It saves them a lot of chasing their tails. Uh, and, and I will take a look. What information I get each week does not delineate for the pharmacies. And exactly. So it's, you know, although I'd love to provide that. And actually, I had a discussion with the Deputy Secretary of Health yesterday asking if all local health departments, even smaller ones, can get at least a modest allocation of Pfizer every week so that we can partner with the right. pediatric and the family practice groups who have high-risk teens that we would like to get vaccinated locally and not having them to go run over the place. The, the issue with Pfizer is they come in a, a, a sealed pack of 1,100 and some doses, and which is more than our entire weekly allocation. So we haven't gotten any. I, I asked the state since the Pfizer storage requirements have been eased a bit over the past month, if they can break those packs and then distribute smaller amounts. And they said they would consider that up at state level. So I'm hoping maybe in the next week or so we'll have a change in policy. 
So right now, when you're scheduling appointments, what group are you working on? Uh, as far as just an age cutoff right now, uh, we actually are starting to slide down to 50 and above because everybody, we were at 60 and above last week. And we've essentially exhausted uh, that list for, especially for the seniors who did not respond. We sent a second email. If they still don't respond, we were making phone calls along with county staff making phone calls. Uh, so we feel we've done everything that we, we can. And we want to make sure that, you know, as many people as possible have access locally. So we've started to move the age, uh, age restriction down to make sure that we can continue to use our supplies every week. Right. So the message is if you're, we're getting down to 50. So if you're 50 years old and you haven't registered, you should register if Correct. you'd like to get a shot. Correct. And although some people would like to do it at their doctor's offices, they need to keep in mind that it may be a month, two months or more before their doctor's offices have anywhere near sufficient supplies to do it in the office. And this week, our allocation is 900 doses for the health department? Correct. Right. Yes. So. A question? Yes, sir. Mr. President. Dr. Polsky, I referred, I believe, last week to the roadmap for recovery, the, the governor's apex executive order, yes. as I called it, characterized it. Um, how far, because you're, you're speaking in terms of phase 2B, I believe, and C currently on that, on your pyramid how soon will we, we be at three i know you that's a tough question to ask per se but what what would be yeah. your projection that the general population would yeah be? so uh, we have not strictly adhered to okay. the state's plans because and this this happens in other counties as well that uh, as we pretty much exhaust the uh, eligible people, we don't want to let vaccines sit. So then we start to, you know, slide our age restrictions uh, to make sure that we're, we're opening up. Uh, the the problem we're trying to project is that we're looking at in in this group right now with two uh, B, uh, which includes anyone sixteen and over with any kind of chronic health conditions. Uh, the majority of adults in our county have some type of chronic health condition that would qualify them. So we're looking at now potentially tens of thousands of people who are eligible, mm -hmm. how quickly we will move through, how many of them will go to pharmacies in Anne Arundel or over in St. Mary's or wherever, that we don't know. So I, I, I kind of hesitate because that starts to set an expectation in some people's minds that this is what will happen, and this is really a week by week. So Fair what enough. I, and what I can say you know, to anyone watching or listening is that we are never going to sit on doses. So we want to make sure that people who are at most risk have the best opportunity. And we realize that you know, because we do not have a mass vaccination site in Calvert, that people depend on our, on our local health department more here than they do in some counties where they have these mass vaccination sites. It's extremely important to us. And that's also, I think, part of the reason why we have relatively high rates of vaccination compared to other counties is we've done a very good job in trying to control and make sure the people are coming in for vaccination are Calvert residents. So we will we we ever, on a truly a daily basis we're keeping an eye on registrations, and anytime we see the opportunity to expand eligibility, that we will do that. But forecasting is uh, right. difficult. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. So we are at two B currently. Correct. Is that just yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're oh, quite welcome. So um, the uptick, I know last week, I think you talked about they're not really testing for variants. So what are we attributing the uptick to this current uptick? Yeah, so um, there are two, two things that we know are going on, but it, to, to weight them, the proportion of which uh, is difficult, and they probably intermingle in, in various ways. So we know that there is an increase in both the UK variant and the California. There's actually two almost identical variants that were first identified in California. So the California variants in the UK are what we're predominantly seeing in Maryland at this point. Uh, this is based on, on kind of crude surveillance at the state level. They still have a limited capability but we know that the prevalence rates of both the UK and the California variants are significantly higher than they were 
a month, six weeks ago. Uh, those, both those strains, the California and UK, are more transmissible, more easily transmitted from person to person. And there is very good evidence at this point that both of them are capable of causing more severe disease, which again, we've seen increases in hospitalization rates as well as increases in cases. And the other is, uh, you know, it's, this is just the reality. You have, you have millions of people in this state who are, we're all fed up. Um, and, and you have all this pent up energy, uh, spring and, you know, biologically, you know, everybody hibernates in one way or another in the winter. And then when spring starts to roll around, you know, people want to go out and do things. And then you have these kind of subtle messages in some ways that were past the worst of it. And it just, it's almost like it gives permission, gives license for people to start, you know, acting in ways that are going to increase transmission of the virus. So uh, it, it's that combination of human behavior and we have viral strains that are more transmissible. And that's, you know, it's a potentially problematic combination as we're seeing. So again, you know, we're not, a, a, a year ago, we had a who knows when uh, this is, we're going to hit a point where things are going to be better. We can now, these vaccines have shown to be extremely effective. And we have about another month or so until the most vulnerable can get vaccinated. And people really need to focus on trying to hold themselves in check for another month, let their neighbors, let their family members, let their congregation members, let everyone have a chance to get vaccinated who's in that 16 to 60 age range with underlying health conditions. And at that point, I think it'll be a much better late spring and summer. Well, I think that, you know, they should have named this the frustration virus because it's been very frustrating. You know, we, uh, according to the news, 10% of the entire population of the country is now vaccinated. Every day there seems to be a new variant that's worse than the one that was here the day before. Our numbers keep going up. People are just frustrated. When is this ever going to end? You know, there's just, you know, whenever we think, you know, if everybody gets vaccinated, we're going to be good. So we're working that way up. And these variants keep coming and the numbers just keep going up. People are just saying, what, when? <laughs> you know, and I know you don't have the answer. I'm not asking you. I'm just venting. Yeah. for all the people out there that sitting back and just are frustrated. And, and believe me, <laughs> I know you are too. I know you are but too. But I, I, will, I will motion back over to, to the graph. If you take a look at, at that 66 and up, those numbers are minuscule compared to everybody else. And that's because that age range has had much more of an opportunity to get vaccinated. So over this next month, we're going to, we should start to see that flattening or that pushing down of those bars uh, now into younger populations. And most importantly, you know, I don't want to be flip or indifferent because even for young, what seem like healthy people, occasionally somebody's going to end up with really se serious complications. But the vast majority of people who are ending up in the hospital, they have diabetes. They have some kind of chronic underlying cardiac condition. You know, there, there are clear reasons why we would expect it. If they get the virus, they're going to get sicker. And those people will have an opportunity the other bit of, of data which has been very encouraging is that although we want people to complete their vaccination series, so if they get Pfizer and Moderna, we want them to solidify and get that second dose, that we now have multiple studies in different countries, different regions of our country who have shown that after two weeks of your first dose, regardless of which vaccine you get, that your protection is about 70%. So even after two weeks of a first dose, we see much lower uh, rates of infection and the consequences of those infections are going to be much less. And that's why I'm saying about a month and not two months, because in my mind, it's not everybody completing their vaccine series. It's being able to get that first dose, giving at least a couple of weeks for their immune system to respond. And then we should start to see decreases in the other age groups like we're seeing in the 65 and above. But, you know, Doc, all this money spent, research, vaccines, media notification, wouldn't you like to see just a one hundredth of that go into eating right, exercise, the things that build up your immune system? You know, I mean, it's it's unfortunate that we're like, we want to lose weight. Just give me a pill to lose weight. Don't give me a pair of tennis shoes. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, we have so gone away from eating right, working out, you know, starting in the school programs and all that, that we're looking for the wonder drug. And I know nothing at all about this. Nothing, right? But, you know, it seems like 
this is not the last one we'll see. And it's just a shame that our immune system is probably the best thing that we have to even help other things go. Why there has not been the pressure to go into schools, go into nursing homes, wherever, and say, you know what? The money we have spent, these kids could have the most healthiest breakfast, lunch, and dinner that they've ever seen. But there just must not be a market for that. There just must, you know, I mean, I, I just don't understand with all this attention, health. That's all we talk about now, right? There's nothing else to talk about but health. Why we don't talk where it starts? So, Commissioner Hart, I agree with you completely, and, and I will take you up to Annapolis and Capitol Hill next year. <laughs> 99% of healthcare dollars get spent on trying to fix people after they get sick. 1% of healthcare spending is spent on trying to keep people healthy and prevent them from getting ill. And this has been a mismanagement in this country for decades. Maybe this is finally a wake-up call that um, sh uh, healthcare funding needs to shift to some degree more money into prevention. School lunches are a perfect example. I don't have time and you don't have sure. time, but you know we could sit here for a good hour just talking about the travesty over decades of You of start eating right, it, you know, as a child, it becomes a way of life. I mean, right. you've seen that so many times with people that, that have been successful in weight loss programs where they're like, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, we all like the double cheeseburger. Who doesn't like the triple meat pizza? I love pizza. <laughs> Who don't love all that stuff? But we know it's moderation, you know, and it's just, it just seems like, I mean, all this, I mean, I've never seen in my lifetime, I'm 52, a domination, the entire world talking about this COVID thing and nobody's saying because you led into it. So many of the cases, diabetes, Heart problems, all these other, because what do they say when they say deaths? They say COVID related, COVID this. They never dive into, you know, was the guy 30 years old, completely healthy? Not saying that it can't happen. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't know all things. But it just seems that the better physically you are, mentally, physically, but the better chance you got for the next strand, next strand. And it just seems like I never see any of that. You don't just depend on people being safe drivers. You build roads in ways. Yeah, you put a seatbelt in there. You, you, right. Yeah. Lighting, right. banking, the type of surface, all those sorts of things. So that, you know, and, and we just haven't done enough of that for general health. Anyway, so I, yep. I don't want to take up more of your yep. time, but, uh, but thank you, Commissioner Hart, because it's an extremely, extremely important point. Well, we appreciate you coming in every week, and next week we're going to give you a break because we're off for Easter. So uh, all right. like we'll see you in two I weeks. I shouldn't drink this. I'm just as bad. Yeah, like like you These said, you, know, you, Aristotle, and Julia Child, everything in moderation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. It's true. <laughs> all right. Uh, Thank I, you. I, I hope you and your family all have a, a wonderful holiday. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well. Thank you.